The Jenkins Auto Group is excited to announce our new seven day money back guarantee. Now, if you don't absolutely. The Jenkins Auto Group is excited to announce our new seven. Hi, and welcome to Creator Fundamentals. My name is Dan Courier, and I am here to help you deliver your value through online video. Welcome to an unscheduled live stream. For those of you who may be familiar with the channel, we usually go live Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern. Tonight, we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, I don't know. For those of you who are familiar, uh, back in January, I think it was, uh, was able to head down to New York City and meet up with some other creators uh, and talk about uh, online video and uh, the state of social media and how we all use it to grow our businesses. Well, we wanted to get together again. We decided to have a video chat and kind of catch up and see where everybody was and I decided hey why not share it with you guys so here we are uh, I'm going to go around and uh, let everybody introduce themselves but uh, uh, no format here we're just going to catch up talk about uh, what each of us are doing to help grow our businesses online and uh, open it up to any questions that you guys might have so uh, welcome everybody it's great to see everybody I believe this is actually Dan Norton's baby, the New York City uh, video mastermind. So we'll start with you, Dan, if you can, uh, for those who may not know Dan, if you want to introduce yourself and let everybody know exactly what you do and, and, and what you're trying to build on uh, through online video. Hey, what's up? Yeah, my name is Dan Norton. Uh, yeah, this actually, uh, Jay Liebs and I uh, both wanted to be able to create uh, an opportunity for a bunch of us that are in the video creator space, video marketing, uh, in the New York City Northeast area, uh, especially coming after Vid Summit, we all got to hang out out in LA, but we all live up here in the Northeast. So, uh, you know, relatively close to New York City. Some of us are in New York, Jersey, you know, Pennsylvania, upstate, like uh, Albany. Like there's so all these different, all of us together in this one area. So, uh, Jay Liebs and I, who will be on here uh, soon, hopefully. We're still waiting uh, for Jay. Yeah. Yeah, still waiting. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> um, and, so we coming out of VidSummit, we all talked together. We're like, hey, we need to make something happen. And we decided to all meet up in January, uh, you know, the perfect month in New York City to meet up in exactly. uh, right on the river uh, at City Vineyard um, and do, do a mastermind of sorts. Just getting together, talking shop, uh, figuring out what our goals for this quarter, for the year are. And... Uh, and make that and make that move forward. You know, we're all at different stages. We all have different things going on. A bunch of us are all different, have different types of niches, different things from from live streaming to woodworking to YouTube to uh, uh, whatever I do, <laughs> which I guess is still kind of undefined. Know, but... I, you know, I just want to jump in here because you're talking about Vid Summit. For those of you who are, may not be familiar with Dan Norton, but you do happen to follow Daryl Eves during Vid Summit this past October. Daryl Leaves had this wonderful idea to live stream for, what was it, five days straight? Yep. Well, <laughs> uh, Dan Norton, uh, you might recognize him as the face who spent the majority uh, of that time on the live stream. So uh, it was uh, he was a trooper. I mean, we were coming and going. It was, you know, 
early morning, late night. Every time you walk through the lobby, there was Dan with this. Uh, who was it? Was it Ustream? Who did the uh, backpacks? Uh, well, it was a mix. It was uh, well, it was Live View. Live View, Live View. That's yeah. it. Okay. And right. I know Ross can speak more to that than I. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Live View is the the what we were using for for that, and uh, and it was uh, live stream pros. Um, it, David and Loria, they were right. Also, uh, yep. Putting all that together. So yeah. Yeah, that was uh, that was quite the uh, quite the soldiering on there. <laughs> <laughs> with all the yeah, I know it was it was an unexpected uh, thing. I was just basically his uh, his PA, his production assistant, uh, basically whatever he needed for his live stream, uh, his personal live stream. I was the one to help him with, and he needed he needed to obviously take care of the show and run the show, and uh, literally handed it to me uh, day one. Uh, that would be Wednesday. Uh, I guess te technically Tuesday was day one, but like when actually the the sessions were going on. Nice. He just was like, here, take it. And I didn't know how long I'd have it for. I didn't realize it would be, you know, 22 yeah. hours over two days. But, hey, yeah, that's pretty much what <laughs> what gave me an opportunity. I went there for opportunity. Didn't expect that opportunity. but That was a whole lot of opportunity, and you nailed it. So. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, which was – it was cool because I got to – connect with a lot of people like you dan and ross and and, and john i know we've all kind of connected separately and there he is Jamie. there he is uh <laughs> we've all kind of connected separately before then but it gave me an opportunity to talk and hang out with a lot of people and, and ask questions that i probably would have been too shy to ask prior and that's how it kind of all leads us all up to us all getting together as this this northeast video creators group so nice. yeah it's exciting uh it's kind of a long-winded uh yeah <laughs> of who i am uh, that's kind of helps describe what this group is and and now that jay's here like i said this is kind of jay and i talking about this and and we just connected with this group here uh, right nice. here in the northeast so we're we're uh you know excited to just have this conversation and with everybody nice ross you want to introduce yourself to the group and uh let everybody know what you do yeah, I'm Ross Brand from Livestream Universe. Uh, just like uh, both Dan's were mentioning, I got to know everybody through uh, Vid Summit. Uh, even Jason Liebman, who lives probably about 25 minutes from me, I think the first two times I got together with him was uh, at Vid Summit, and uh, so it was awesome uh, to all meet together in New York City and uh, just be able to chat uh about video and to go out and do some shooting and and just enjoy uh that whole great backdrop that's new york city um as the the name Livestream universe probably gives it away i'm primarily a live broadcaster that's been my focus although i'm doing more uh with youtube than than ever before in the last few months and it's not all just repurposing live stuff although that's certainly a part of what i do um, and I also do some podcasting and audio production as well. Uh, just got back from uh, PodFest Expo. Uh, so it's all content at the end of the day. And uh, it's yeah. always great uh, sharing ideas with all these guys. And uh, like I said, it all goes back to Vid Summit for, for all of us meeting. Yeah, it's really funny because all of us are generally on on the East Coast and and. Uh, the first time we probably all interacted was in Los Angeles. So it's unfortunately there aren't a ton of uh, opportunities for everybody to get together here on the East Coast, which we're trying to change. And this is a, a small step in that direction. Um, I'm going to jump down to one of the two that I can see had their microphones muted. So we'll give them the opportunity to not be muted. Uh, we'll go to John. Uh, AKA you do it. If you want to introduce yourself and let everybody know what you do. Hi everyone. This is John. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I am in Wildwood right now. So we're in our uh, short house, just uh, hanging out here uh, for the weekend. So I do uh, a lot of DIY and makerspace type of content, uh, but I'm also taking a path where I'm trying to help other creators in the same niche, uh, DIY and makerspace to realize how important it is to create video content and encourage others who may not be creating video content to do it because their tip could save somebody else a trip to the hardware store, a trip to the repair shop. Uh, some of the videos I create are how to get your pressure washer started. Um, my neighbor and I just created the video. I had no clue how many views it would get. It has 165,000 views now. 
and we created it uh, over the winter, last winter. So it's a seasonal type video, but it's going to pick up again soon. Yeah. Good. Oh, no, I was going to say it's interesting because that's actually how I started on YouTube. I have another channel called The Average Dan, and I literally started that channel when I had something to fix and I couldn't find a video on it. So I made the video as I fixed it. Uh, there's a lot of power in that on YouTube. I mean, it's the, the number two search engine. Uh, how to content is super strong and super powerful and, and helping, uh, you know, and it's YouTube is very, um, you know, a lot of people like to tell everybody how wonderful suggested video is because we all see the power of suggested video and just how much a video can take off when YouTube grabs onto it and starts showing it to people. But there is so much potential in how to uh, content that pulls up in search that people, you know, because so many people come to YouTube to answer a question uh, or to solve a problem and content like this, you know, any how to uh, content, uh, you know, or do it yourself is just it, it's it's super powerful to not only grow your audience, but there's always going to be people coming here and looking for that type of stuff. So uh, awesome. Uh, Jay leaves down there. I see your mic is still muted. Uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> Look at the magic of the internet. It is unmuted now. You want to introduce yourself to the uh, to the stream? Absolutely. Um, so as these guys have stated before, I'm based in New Jersey. My name is Jay Leibs. I do video production photography. I'm like a jack of all media trades. Um, and I knew most of these guys kind of from the internet. And we're all local. And as Ross was saying before, I think the first time we met was at the airport on the way to California. So it was at least technically in New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, because we accidentally booked the same flight. But anyway, um, I'm CEO of a company I have called Leaps Media, where I produce video stuff for local businesses, um, you know, help them with their branding packages and stuff like that. So um, I've had years in marketing and media production behind the scenes with a lot of other uh, companies. I worked at an agency. I've worked with a couple other YouTubers that people might know. And, you know, in the last year or so, I've been stepping out from behind the camera in front of it to, you know, kind of kind of like what you were saying, Dan and John, too. Like, as I'm learning and growing and developing, I kind of want to share that journey and those skills with other people. That might be in the same position a little bit behind and kind of grow that community so i mean i don't have like a tailored sales pitch about like who i am or like a cool tagline i'm still forging that out but uh yeah anything when it, oh and i'm a youtube certified person just to sneak that one in but <laughs> yeah it uh you, you know anything with cameras anything with creating you know visual storytelling and stuff like that i'm into it so that's what i'm here to help people do awesome awesome gonna jump in the chat real quick to see who we have yeah. out here i see west coast cage in cuisine thanks for joining lemons for breakfast muldog productions hardest man in tarot jb the pro captain mario dude two financials uh is it let's see gamer x 33 and I'm always going to butcher these names. Uh, Ashat X, Outdoors TV, Ryan Barnes, Pam, good to see you. Chris is out there as well. Uh, uh, Super Adonis, Kevin Boston 7, Zero, Cool, Cool Mo 18, I guess. <laughs> Driving well, lessons. Really good usernames. But I know, right? They, well, they keep me on my toes. Uh, Chef Jelly's out there as well. Good to see everybody in the live stream. This unexpected live stream on a Thursday night. I know I throw you guys all for a loop with that. But uh, uh, for those of you who are wondering, couldn't do the live stream last night. My daughter actually had a band concert. So that's where I was last night. And uh, so uh, have this cool opportunity to bring all of these great creators on the channel. So how could I, uh, how could I uh, pass up on that opportunity? So... Um, obviously we, uh, recently crossed over into 2019. You guys, what are you guys' plans for 2019? Any big changes or any big next steps in what you guys are trying to accomplish in 2019? I'm not trying to restructure my entire business at all. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, since everybody was quiet, I'll just jump in again. But, uh, 
seriously, I think uh, the big plan for 2019 is take everything that I've learned on the journey so far as like going from working in house to being an entrepreneur and just re solidifying a lot of things to make it more like, you know, what was like, like, uh, you know, structured like a real business in a sense. So, you know, because everybody gives you that when you're freelancing and stuff like that. Um, but I've learned from a lot of great mentors uh, over the years and, you know, stuff like uh, Dan and I were both in a class with our friend Owen learning how to productize and set, sell things and, you know, build the systems that are going to help you do that since we have the internet and all these different websites that can help us as tools. So, you know, I was brute forcing a lot of sales and stuff like that. So I'm building systems to make that function better this year. That's my biggest priority right now. Nice. How about you, Dan? Yeah, it would be, it's very similar to that. Um, <clears throat> it, one of the biggest criticisms of my criticisms, I think I get as, uh, you know, I did, got did that whole thing of a vid summit and then literally disappeared uh, <laughs> off of like public like creation and videos, whether that be my parenting channel or this one, my personal one. Um, it, it's, but that's because I've been focusing, shifting my focus uh, into creating a business so that I can have more time to create the videos, right? Uh, with my job, I work all over the place. So I'm trying to establish myself, trying to figure out what I can offer uh, and what, what people do. So for me, that's, that's video editing. Um, and being able to create a system around video editing for people who use video for their online marketing, for their businesses, for their brands, and and get that going. So I've been focusing this quarter on establishing that, getting that started. Uh, but my big goal is to yeah, to start creating content, start driving uh, driving that for you know, driving leads back to that, uh, and building that up so that maybe maybe by the end of the year, who knows, I could uh, either you know not be at my job or hopefully no one from my job is listening to this uh, <laughs> and whatever but uh yeah it's just to kind of just kind of create more of that stuff figure out how i can help people better um and that's that's been my main focus this quarter i think i'm finally getting to that point right as we end this quarter um and now just looking looking forward to that bigger picture and, and actually getting some content created which should be happening very 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 soon nice anybody else want to jump in any All right, I already I'll... did. <laughs> All right, so I'll go. Um, so obviously I am uh, coming up on the uh, – well, coming up is relative. In June, June will be two years on Creator Fundamentals. Um, so I'm constantly focused on trying to um, grow the business, reach more people, obviously expand revenue streams to the point that I'm not, um, you know – at the mercy of any given platform, obviously, and this is going to be kind of contrary to a change that I made today, which is, um, so I think it's important to diversify, try to get as many, as many different ways to make money as possible. Um, I know people are sometimes conflicted by that because they think that entrepreneurship uh, uh, is at odds with creativity, but for me, uh, entrepreneurship is my creativity, um, you know, growing and building something piece by piece uh, that can sustain itself and then potentially sustain you uh, to me is is a very creative process. And there's a lot of moving parts and there's all kinds of things to do that. Me personally, um, obviously, I wanted to expand where I was, uh, you know, the the opportunities to go out and engage with other creators. Uh, so I added social media marketing world to the mix this year. I'm heading out there next week. I'll be doing Vid Summit again in October. Um, I've also been working with um, talking with Dale Roberts. For those of you who know self publishing with Dale, uh, he's been helping me. I'm working on writing a book. Uh, also, am working on building online courses. So, which I'm uh, going to be launching later this year. So. Uh, just trying to put all those pieces together, you know, and uh, but the big change that I made today in terms of my branding uh, a while back, I kind of got caught up in that idea a little too much of not trying to be totally um, dependent on a platform. But at the end of the day, I'm all focused about YouTube. So I, I originally had a tagline of YouTube simplified, which I think was really short and concise and sweet and to the point. And I moved away from it because I wanted to wanted to make sure that I wasn't just all, you know, 100% in on YouTube, but 
that really is what I do. So uh, I decided to go back to that and change change my branding just and go all in and, and really niche down on it's kind of the content I was making uh, anyway, but my branding didn't really communicate that. So uh, I thought it was important for me to, you know, kind of own it and just, you know, dive in from a branding perspective uh, on that front. So Ross, you got anything cooking for 2019 that you want to share with everybody? Yeah, I got a, a few of the burners are going. Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, obviously, YouTube's more of a focus for me than ever before. No longer am I treating my channel as an archive where I, you know, occasionally put up some old stuff and it sits there as sort of a portfolio that, you know, I could send a link to if somebody wants to see what I've done in the past. Um, I'm, I'm being more intentional about what I put on uh, YouTube and I'm seeing kind of what works and learning a little more about editing for YouTube and things like that. As you know, I said, I'm primarily a live broadcaster. Uh, the other area of focus, um, I've been doing Alexa flash briefings for, I guess about a year, a little over a year now. And so I'm starting to get opportunities to speak about, uh, Alexa and flash briefings and also to help other people, uh with creating them and producing them for their we need to talk business. so <laughs> that's that's kind of becoming a focus i'm going to be speaking locally about that i'm going to be speaking at a conference in the midwest about that and um and, and so i'm excited to see when that reaches a tipping point or whatever you want to call it where it starts becoming um more of a business necessity or more ubiquitous right now we're still definitely in the the early adopter phase but it's it's not a bad idea for people to uh grab themselves a space and even if they're not putting it out every day like amazon sometimes <coughs> suggests, and i'm not doing my own one every day any longer it, it's not a bad idea to learn the skill set and get on the platform and have a have a space and start thinking about uh, short form audio content that people can ask for by voice. And it's a way to, you know, talk to people in their homes and offices and things like that. So I'd say between YouTube and, and short form audio, those are kind of the two areas of produced content I'm adding to, to live streaming this year. Nice. And I would imagine from an educational perspective, that is a, I mean, you could totally jump in and own the educational space for teaching people how to set that up. Cause that's actually something that I like, I have all kinds of material that I collected specifically with the intention of creating an Alexa brief. Um, right. I just never followed through in terms of, you know, lining up the steps and actually getting it done. I mean, I looked up the format to upload file, you know, audio files for the week and all of that, uh, but just never, never went through with it. So I, I, I mean, there's definitely probably a Definitely, probably, you know, yeah, non-committal, but right. uh, I would think there's a great opportunity there to, you know, to kind of own that from an educational standpoint in terms of offering material, free material, paid material, all that. So I find that yeah. really interesting. I'm really curious where it's going to go, um, you know, whether people would get into the habit of, um, you know, jumping on, you know, waking up in the morning, asking Alexa for, you know, whatever the, whatever the case is there and, and, uh, and moving on so it'll be really interesting to see what happens hey yeah, look at i mean i think one day they're going to ask for you know they'll, they'll put a, together a flash briefing and they'll have the news and the weather and the sports and the stocks right. and somewhere in there they'll be their tip of the day from creator fundamentals or they'll yeah, be yeah. you know uh jay Leeb's update about what's going on in in central new jersey or what have you so um yeah i think it's an opportunity it depends when we start seeing them in new cars and new houses and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I yeah, that is, it's it's really intriguing to me, especially I don't for anybody who follows uh, Gary Vaynerchuk and you know he's kind of you know really in on audio and the potential. Um, that's kind of a different. It's a different take on audio because like you know when he talks about audio, he talk and and it's really important to me. Like I quote unquote read a lot or I try to read a lot, but I don't ever pick up a book. I'm all about audible. Um, but I, I can't, I can't ever justify the time spent on taking a book or sitting somewhere doing nothing except listening to a book. So I'll listen to a book 
Sometimes I'll listen to it while I'm doing work at work. Sometimes I'll do it on my commute, but I feel like the, you know, the audio in that context allows you to multitask and get twice as much done in the same amount of time that you would normally be doing something else. But I feel like Alexa is a little bit different, but at the same time, you know, if you're getting ready, you know, maybe you, you put it in wherever you, you get ready. I was going to say put it in the bathroom, but sometimes I feel like those things are always listening in any way. But, uh, <laughs> you know, sure we set off a lot of people's uh, name. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, Alexa. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <Google said that. laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, that could certainly, you know, become part of the daily routine. You know, like the same way we pick up our phones or, well, maybe maybe I gave too much away that I look at my phone when I first wake up. You know, to see if that video took off or not that I posted the night before. But, you know, the same could be people waking up and asking, like you said, Alexa for to get their day started with some info. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. Got anything cooking, John? Yeah, I do. Um, for me, the the wake up was going to conferences, you know, the, let, let, let's roll back a couple of years where I had some internal thoughts that um we're, we're somewhat negative, like I'm not good enough to do this or whatever. And then Roberto and, and his wisdom is producing videos for us weirdos that have these internal thoughts to kind of kick us out of it. And it's really what he does, you know, and he, he's like, basically you're good enough, you're smart enough and people like you, you know? So uh, I really, uh, I really appreciate what he's done because he realized that I do have value to offer. And so I started attending conferences, making connections, especially with you guys, um, and going to YouTube meetups. There's, they're all over, you know, and I'm just willing to go with them. They include my wife because, you know, whenever you do this stuff, it's really a family business. Even if your spouse isn't there, whatever you do affects your spouse. Um, and that's actually making our relationship even stronger because we're, uh, we're doing a lot of this together. Uh, so my latest conference that I attended was WorkbenchCon, and that was um, that was in Atlanta. And the whole purpose of that was to have the makers, woodworkers, lifestyle people uh, all together in one room, connecting with sponsors, but also to to network and share ideas. And that's really helped me a lot. And one of the things that spawned out of Vid Summit uh, the, the prior year was uh, talking with Jason uh, from Doing It With Jason. And we now have a podcast together. So we have the What Is Good podcast. Nice. Like, I, I never didn't know anything about a podcast, you know, but sitting in on some of these things at WorkbenchCon and sitting in at the um, Vid Summit, you know, really woke me up to the idea. And Dan and I met at SPI in Philly uh, and we connected there. That was, that was awesome. And that, that really helped with me. So my point is, is that if you haven't been to a conference, try to get to one. If, if it's not in the budget, find some local meetups because it's, it's going to really help you uh, down the road. And we were in, I think it was Gary V who said at Vid Summit that, you know, don't come to me, go to the person to your left and the person to your right, because they're the ones who are going to help you. And it's the truth. You know, we, we help each other and then our audiences are shared across multiple platforms and it really helps to boost everybody along the way. You know, I see Roger uh, coming in here. Roger is the expert plumber and I met Roger at, uh, video marketing world in uh, Dallas and that that was an awesome event in itself uh, being able to network with everyone but Roger is the king of LinkedIn you know and he uh, he's a plumber who is producing some awesome content and what it demonstrates is that if you do it right people will recognize you and subscribe to you share your content put comments on there like well wow, you really helped me with this thing I was able to do it or now I understand what the plumber is doing. So I know what questions they ask. So it's, uh, it's really, really important. Yeah. And to that point, you know, like you said, a lot of people get fixated on trying to work with bigger creators 
like that is the only place to find value. But, um, you know, I always in, in I came into a space, obviously, you know, YouTube educational, and I did it with this crazy idea that um, that I was going to start from zero and make educational content on YouTube. I had my other channel, but uh, at the end of the day, I was still, you know, this small channel with out anything to back up that I knew what I was talking about. Um, and I think people need to realize is that in a lot of cases, the size of a channel is just based on when somebody started. Um, you know, it doesn't, you, people get too caught up in the size of a channel thinking, oh, well, that person can't possibly know anything because their channel is so small. Well, you know, somebody else started three years before them. Uh, and that's why they have a bigger following. But you don't know that this person, you know, has been doing this for 20 years uh, and they have real world experience that's all super valuable. It's just not built into content yet. So don't get so caught up in the size of a channel because there's also really big channels that, you know, that, <laughs> that aren't necessarily all that great. So uh, I think it, it, that's, you know, we always talk about community and the importance of community. And that's really why we say that it gives you the opportunity to go beyond the numbers look you know not just on a subscriber count when we go to vid summit nobody goes hi my name is dan what's your subscriber count those types of conversations don't come up you you interact with people you get to know them as individuals um and if you guys click there's opportunities there to collab or share knowledge or to do like uh we're doing and somebody asked if we were all in new york city uh the reason this is the new york city video mastermind is because we're all generally in the northeast and we had the opportunity to kind of converge in new york city back in january i think it was to get together uh you know all of these creators here in the northeast who had met everybody well not everybody but uh, many of us who met for the first time on the West Coast in Los Angeles. So it just seems ridiculous that we, you know, don't take advantage of the people who are, are, are close to us and we can we can form connections with. And just by the way, I taught, you know, I Daryl Eves posted and I reminded him that I want to get him here for a meetup. And he said he's definitely coming to New York. So I don't know specifically where he's going to end up, but uh he did say it again, so hopefully uh, in the not-too-distant future we will have a meet-up with Daryl Eves somewhere here in New York that we can all get to and uh, enjoy that. So, um, Let's see here. I just want to jump in the chat. I saw that uh, Dale, self-publishing with Dale, had popped into the chat. It was like he heard me talking about him. <laughs> His uh, ears were burning. I know, right? And uh, Expert Plumber, like you mentioned, in the chat as well. Good to see you. Uh, get definitely going to make it to Vid Summit. You know, so an interesting story about Vid Summit, um, at least for me, like the very first year that I went to Vid Summit, I had kind of I had decided that it was that it really wasn't in my budget. And uh, don't tell my wife this, but I had casually mentioned it to her, and she's like, "Are you going?" And I had like never really considered that that was like that that was even a consideration. I was like, uh, "Oh well, yeah, I guess I am going." <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, it was such, I think when I went there, the first time I went to VidSummit, I, I, and again, not that the size matters, but just for reference, I had 400 subscribers, uh, when I went the first year, uh, this past year, I think I went and I was at like 12,000 subscribers and I, who, who knows where I'll be in, in, in October, but, uh, the connections you make there, the ability to meet all these people in person, uh, is really powerful in, um, you know, kind of learning the behind the scenes stuff, learning what these people are really like and how they uh, are able to make content. You learn, you know, you pick up all kinds of stuff uh, and, you know, collaborations are just kind of like a bonus. Just being able to talk to these people in passing uh, really provides a lot of value. They don't they don't like to they don't like it when you run around telling everybody that all the all the value is in the uh, in the hallways oh, <laughs> because they pay for all these people to come and speak. Uh, but there is a ton of value in the hallways that never makes it into the live streams that they you know, the, the replays and stuff that they do. Except for this year with Dan Norton running the live stream in yeah. the in the hallway, which which I think the better way of saying it is that there's more value than you expect. Like it's not just the speakers, but it's also in the hallways. Cause, yeah, for sure. Because like networking with people and stuff. This year I went as a volunteer. Last year I went working for another creator who who got me a ticket. So I mean, there are also other ways to do it if it's not in your budget. 
um, and volunteering, I got to work on the live stream and I have a background and do live streaming professionally, which is why they said from your application, that's why we put you on this team. So, I mean, I got work experience, I got networking, I made friends, you know, like there's a, there's a lot of good from these conferences. All of them are looking for volunteers to be working them, you know, like, so if there's a will, there's a way is kind of my two cents. I want to add into that. Oh yeah, for sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Dan. Sorry. No, I've, I've come to believe that volunteering is almost better than just paying for the ticket. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that comes from, well, John and I met at, uh, Pat Flynn's smart passive income meetup in Philly. It it was outside of the, um, podcast movement, uh, conference where Pat had keynote keynoted. I didn't go to the conference. I don't, I don't know, John, did you, you didn't go to the conference either. Did you? You You're just local. Um, and I had gotten an email from Pat's team. I guess I sent it out to people in geographic areas and said, Hey, like we're, we're coming out to Philly. We need a couple volunteers. First 10 people that email will, you know, get the opportunity. And I did it and I, you know, didn't know what to expect. Thought I might be like a greeter. And they said they needed someone to take photos and videos. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll have my stuff. Made a little family vacation down to Philly. Never been there before. Got to do a little touring, Uh, but volunteering gave me access before everyone could walk in. I got to know Pat's uh, assistant, Jess, and and got to actually speak well with with Pat. Got an awesome time to talk with uh, John Lee Dumas. Um, who gave me time because he knew I was giving Pat time. And then that's where I met John because I was going around taking pictures. You know, I don't know if we would have had a conversation. It might not have if I wasn't going around having to take picture of everyone and having to have a conversation. Um, and then when I got, I volunteered, Jeremy Vest told me to volunteer for Daryl. And I was like, well, I didn't even think that that would be an opportunity. I don't think a lot of people realize that there's a volunteer opportunities. And, you know, I know Jay, Jay would say this too, and John as well. Um, we got this behind the scenes look when we got to volunteer. We, oh, yeah. we were there early. They were long days. They're tiring. It's a lot of work. You miss sessions, mm-hmm. but you are get direct connections with the people who speakers, you get direct connections with the people who are running this event. You get to see things that no one else gets to see. Um, and you don't have to stand online waiting for your, t- <laughs> waiting for your tickets and stuff. I think volunteering, the, the problem is I think a lot of people look down on it, right? You, you see yourself at a certain level and I couldn't ever volunteer and I, I get it to a certain point. Right. Mm-hmm. But I definitely recommend anybody to like, if you want to get to these events, make it happen, put yourself out there to volunteer. Yeah. You still have to fly out there. Yeah. It's still, there's that expense, but at least that saves you the ticket and gets you kind of in, in the door a little mm-hmm. better. And I, I mean, I got an opportunity that I didn't even expect until I show, I, I didn't even know until three days into it that I was going to get, get that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but that's just what happens when you're willingly putting yourself out there and share the things the the abilities that you have, and just be willing to do some free work, you know, and do whatever, whether that's like handing out Gary V shoes to people or like working on a, on the live stream or just like literally taking names of people who are coming in and mm-hmm. checking them off a list there is opportunity in there and you're going to be seen and known by Daryl Eves and, and, and everyone else that's running the event. And I think that's awesome. So for me, I'm kind of excited for that. I was actually hoping to volunteer for social media marketing world, but the timing isn't going to work out this year. So, but we'll see for next year. But yeah, I, I think a lot of people should actually consider it. And if you don't know like wh- how to do it or whatever, just send a message to whoever is running it. If you could find their team, if you could go on the vid summit website, send a message, say, Hey, I'm looking to volunteer. Is there any opportunities? This is my experience. You never know what could come out of it. So I, I think uh, for me, it was awesome uh, to be able to do that. And and the two other guys here who are volunteers as well. I, I, I believe you have the same experience. Yeah. I also want to just quickly echo what you were just saying in relation to the point that we brought up about from like Gary V's keynote speech about like, don't just go for the big names and big personalities, go for the people that are around the same size as you, same interests as you, like whatever, go with the people that you actually connect with rather than big name. Um, I mean, for two reasons, one, I know for a fact that like some of the other volunteers, have more subscribers and bigger audiences than some of the people that were there, you know, paying full price and everything else like that. But it's like, you wouldn't assume that if you like, oh, volunteers are probably just high school kids working, right? Um, And then the the other part is like, you know, you don't you don't know who these people are going to become, you don't know who your collaborators are going to be one day, I'm sure the people that if you ask anybody that's like, at whatever you consider to be the top, 
they and their friends that are there they'll probably laugh about how they got there like that's how most of the stories are going to be right they're going to be nostalgic like you don't achieve success in the world like just by going after successful people you need to be somebody of value and grow yourself and provide value to other people and network with other people to kind of get into that you know what i mean like i don't want to go too far down like a philosophical rabbit hole or something like that but like the fact the fact is like you know this group for instance came probably out of just that idea of hey we're all local and doing the same thing why don't we hang out more right it's just that simple inclination like if i went on meetup and looked for a group like this i probably wasn't finding it but like you know go to conferences network with people find out people that are in the same industry as you same location you know same niche whatever and just make friends because something like this will happen. Yeah, like the, um, the volunteering for me, thanks to Dan for hooking me up with that. Um, it was a great experience, definitely a long days, but totally worth it. I read the book Conference Crushing, which I, I shared in chat. Um, that was something that Roberto recommended that you read. And the whole purpose of that was find a way to, to volunteer get into uh, the the event uh, because that's going to give you access just like Dan and Jay were saying uh, to to the talent and to other creators and you're going to network with your fellow volunteers also and develop relationships there that are really important and so you know that's how that's how we grew our relationship at Vid Summit uh, and I'm also on a book reading kick you know, uh, Roberto has his uh, book club that he's been uh, sharing on Twitter. Um, so I read The Miracle Morning. I read Ultimate Power by Tony Robbins. I read uh, Amy uh, Schmittauer, uh, Landino's book, uh, Vlog Like a Boss. Uh, yeah, I'm on a I'm on a heavy book reading kick, but I I do the um, the audio books, just like Dan said, because. Uh, yeah, I can't justify just sitting there. Um, and when I'm driving down the Wildwood, you know, it's like an hour and a half drive from my house. So that's like the perfect time to kick on an audio book. So consider reading is, uh, you know, knowledge is power. And I mentioned before I, that we should do like a creator, a YouTuber, like book club, because there's there's a lot of great stuff out there. Like, you know, Vlog, vlog Like a Boss by Amy. Uh read that one currently reading a book called um i think it's called influence which is a really good one and then there's also um the power of habit was a book i read a while back which uh goes into basically understanding the habits that we have you know a lot of people have trouble trying to get into the routine of making content uh and it kind of breaks down why we have habits and how we actually successfully get our habits to do what we want them to do uh so yeah definitely there's so much good material out there to read I hate there, actually there's so much I kind of have it piled up now I think I have like five audible books that I still need to finish reading but uh, absolutely between that and and the conferences um, if you can if, if you're if you're on the like on the fence uh, but you want to take you know content creation seriously and you want to build something uh, put yourself I mean like I'm I, I'm a very I'm not one of those hey quit your job and sack you know put your entire family at risk to chase a dream kind of guys you know I'm kind of you know practical first and I have responsibilities so I you know I do this part time but uh, if it's not if it's not gonna break the bank um, you know do whatever you can to get to one of these you know vid summit is a great one to get to uh, if you have to you know try to meet another creator maybe you split a hotel room or you do you know there's ways to save money. Uh, without going crazy um but it, it's it's just definitely worth it it submerses you in that you know that atmosphere it surrounds you with like-minded people we all know that you're probably not going to go to work and sit down and have a conversation about youtube or instagram or twitter with your coworkers or your friends because they don't know what the heck you're talking about and they think you're crazy um you know so just getting yourself surrounded by people who all think that way and all have the same similar goals is is uh is a really great experience all righty here. Just saw a couple things in the chat. Um, 
I've got to say, if you are not following uh, Roger Wakefield on LinkedIn, uh, the expert plumber, he's one of the few that are get have LinkedIn live right now. Uh, such a great guy. He's uh, he's one of those guys where in person you see him and you, he's like looks super intimidating and you think he's like uh, you know a biker from uh, what's that show? Uh, uh, what do you call it? Sons of Anarchy. But then he's like the nicest like sweetest guy so uh before because linkedin live is like so it's crazy chris strub has got that right now too uh one of the few people and so yeah if you're not check him out I, I think he's he's a perfect example of what business owners should be doing with online content right with online video he's he's experimenting with live video using these these new platforms and ross i don't know if you could speak to anything with linkedin live i don't know if anyone wants to talk about it but it's like uh it's I think it's cool and I think it's cool to see someone like uh, see someone like Roger be able to take you know take that from you know a niche that you might not think about so much about doing online video for especially like a business owner uh, at doing that but I think he's a perfect example of what I think a lot of businesses local businesses should be doing uh, with video. Yeah, I mean it's kind of a slow rollout right now, so a lot of us are waiting for our first uh, first yeah. taste of it. Uh, but Chris Strub got on there uh, early, and he's been uh, been live several times. Um, mm. I would say if you're not super comfortable going live and you haven't really sort of established what your show is and where your strengths are and things like that, you might not want to make LinkedIn your first platform you might want to go live on say your facebook personal profile a few times and maybe not talk business the first couple times out of the box but once you get comfortable and you understand you know what you do well and 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 you're comfortable talking about business and talking about um you know different topics and engaging and all that stuff i it's it's really powerful to be on linkedin i mean it, it just and it's not a it's it, the competition for attention on LinkedIn isn't what it is on any of the other major social platforms. There just aren't a lot of people doing video and aren't a lot of people doing video well on on LinkedIn and have really thought about how they can put, you know, native video on LinkedIn that that resonates. So, um, you know, you can even start right now if you don't have it by uploading videos up to 10 minutes. I think, you know, some people are very effective with one to two minute clips uh, that highlight some aspect of their business or share uh, a tip or, or, or information. Um, yeah, I think it's exciting. Um, video becoming a bigger part of LinkedIn and now live coming to LinkedIn. Of course, we're going to see a few people may may trip up and... <laughs> hurt their careers in the short term but in general i, I think if you're uh it, like i say you get you get your get your stuff down on another another platform first then bring your a game to linkedin because you know there is that sort of first impression thing that you're making in front of uh people who may be judging you for a job or whether they want to you know go into business with you or that kind of thing um I, I want to throw out a question to everybody because I, I think from from li listening to the conversation, it's safe to conclude that we all agree that if you only can go to one uh, conference a year related to YouTube, Vid Summit's you know the one to go to. Is there another conference uh, related to YouTube or video creation that's on you guys' radar that's on your agenda for for this year? I mean, I'm going to VidCon again this year um i've been going for the past few years so that it's less of the professional development conference and more of just like the celebration of online video stuff um but they have been greatly expanding like the creator track to actually teach more i would say i've, I've been there since like the the first time that they open up the creator track in the middle because it's community creator and industry um an industry tends to be the brands and businesses trying to learn how to work with influencers more than teaching up and coming influencers how to use the platform well so that's why they made the creator track but um it, it's been helpful it's great for you know a lot of people going to the same place and setting up collaborations and stuff like that i mean i spend probably more of my time filming content with people from all around the world than i do like in panels all day at that one um and then you know dinners and networking and stuff like that with people it's more fun then you get to go to disney 
for a day with all all your favorite youtubers and stuff like that like hey i've seen you online and online for the roller coaster i'm i'm, I'm done <laughs> <laughs> But but seriously, it's um, it's that one. They did. They were trying to start a stream con in New York City a few years ago. It was the same people that did New York City Comic Con, um, because they saw the success of VidCon and Vid Summit was just starting to come up. So they started something. But I don't. I don't think that one continued. I think that one kind of fizzled out because they they were missing something. I think they were missing like the right people in the right space collaborating and like doesn't matter you know so i don't know what other video conferences anybody else have something that they want to throw in for where they're going this year yeah well i mean i'm going to social media marketing world um basically for that reason to see to to try to get a taste of some other conferences i think the thing about social media marketing world is just it's massive it's like six thousand people uh, mm -hmm. or something so i don't know i don't know That's from massive. from <laughs> 6, a said? six thousand yeah i mean wow. compared to vid summit vid, yeah i was gonna say vidcon i think is up to thirty thousand this year That's just yeah said, like, it's a little bit overwhelming if you're really not into the celebration of the online media part of it yeah and i i mean a lot of that depends i mean vidcon is really i mean a lot of vidcon is a celebration like, you know, of, of your favorite creators, you know, I mean, there's certainly yeah. a large, uh, probably a large percentage of that population that, that go to VidCon are, you know, it's you're going there like it's a concert, um, you know, trying to see their creators there in person. Are concerts. Yeah, well, there you go. See, <laughs> um, from a business perspective, uh, obviously, I think VidSummit kind of just takes all the stuff that we want and condenses it into, uh, you know, a conference just about that. Um I wanted to check out social media marketing world because I feel like it's kind of the, a, a, I think it is, well, we'll see. I don't know. It's my understanding that it's more the business side of social media. Um, obviously by its name, it suggests that, uh, you know, just as, just to see people from other, um, you know, along lines we were talking about trying to just meet people, people that I wouldn't normally cross paths with in the YouTube space, maybe meet some people on other platforms, uh, you know, cause as much as I like to focus on YouTube, I think it's important to kind of be present on all the other social media platforms as well. You know, and maybe there's an opportunity there to meet somebody who is like the king of Twitter or Instagram, you know, and maybe they're trying to build a YouTube channel. So there's, you know, opportunity to help each other, that kind of stuff. So, um, and it's in San Diego and I'm in New York in the middle of winter. So I don't mind, uh, I don't mind, uh, um, sacrificing, <laughs> a well, little at least time now we're there. being honest then yeah exactly <laughs> the real reason um take one for the team but it's kind of a it i mean it, it's a bummer that all the all the big conferences are are on the west coast um yeah. and i know i've talked about the guy all of you um in may of 2020 i'm trying to organize a um a conference of sorts here in upstate new york in albany new york and i've had conversations with uh, the venue that I want to use, uh, I want to keep it to about 100 people for the first one. Just <laughs> don't want to have a Tanacon on my hands, no. uh, um, you know, and just try to get all of the, the framework in place with about 100 people just to learn how, like you said, all the stuff that, you, that, that Dan, you might have picked up a lot of behind the scenes working with Daryl um, to kind of get the flow of that for one to see if it's something that I would want to actually own and expand and and make it a significant event um mm -hmm. plus you you know also know that i'm going to document the entire process and <laughs> and turn it into a course when i'm done but uh um but yeah so i'm hoping to do that and uh and bring some people there's a lot of people in new york state and you know you know jersey and pennsylvania below us and people up in toronto so there's a there's a a fairly decent group of creators in our area that I think we can kind of bring in local. Maybe we'll get some people from, from outside the area, but, uh, still trying to, to, to finalize the date of the venue, but it's kind of, it's, uh, it so far, well, we'll see how it goes. I need to get, I need to get the ball rolling a lot faster, I'm trying to get the, uh, the lady to get back to me <laughs> a little quicker. She was like on vacation or something, but 
Yeah, I noticed stuff on the East Coast just from like growing up around here and now being in this industry is like a lot of smaller stuff like, you know, Samsung might have an event in the city where Gary Vee is going to come speak or, you know, 368 might invite like 20 people to that are creators that they know of to come and do something. Right, right. And that's just starting too. So I give them that credit there. Um, but it, it is interesting to see that, like, you know, we have these big convention center events on the West Coast that everybody's throwing. And everything on the East Coast seems to be like, you know, our group of people just getting together for lunch or like, you know, a group of like 30 people showing up at an auditorium for a day. And it really does seem to be lacking. So. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I think we'll figure out what the actual, um, you know, why that happens. I, my thought would be to some degree that they start small and never, never find the right mix to have a need to expand. Uh, you yeah. know, if you can't kind of can't put roots down in something that, that, um, you know, shows it's, it's opportunity, then they probably just kind of come and go. But I think yeah. there's, uh, there's NAB New York, which Dan Norton and I went to, um, and that's, it's not as big as the Vegas, uh, NAB show, the National Association yeah. of Broadcasters. Um, but it's it, it's a big event. I mean, it's at Javits and, you yeah. know, there. I wouldn't say it's a place to go, like looking for collaboration and, and learning, although there are some sessions that you can go to. Um, but it, it's fun to kind of walk around and check out all the vendors and the gear and stuff like that. Um, for typical YouTubers, a lot of what on display on the video side is mm -hmm. going to be way beyond your budget you know like here's an eight thousand dollar setup that'll bring in six cameras or whatever right right you know that's not um but there's also the audio side and you can go over there and that there's a lot of stuff on the audio side from microphones and mixers and audio interfaces and all that stuff uh, you know, lav mics and boom mics and all that stuff. You can go check all that out. And that's, you know, that's all stuff that we need and can, can more easily afford compared to, you know, <laughs> the new film camera or whatever. Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of kind of learning that, that you can do just by walking around and talking to the different vendors and you can experiment with some of the different equipment and, and just ask questions and, you get to know some of the companies that are there. I, I'd highly recommend, you know, it's usually two days. Spend a day and, you know, just an afternoon or a morning or something and walk around and get a feel for it. You'll see, you know, like all the big, a lot of the big brands come out for that. It's it's a pretty cool event. And that's, that's a big event. And I think there's a ticket that you can go for either for free or very low cost. Um, you, you don't get to do everything and go to all the sessions, but you get, there's some intro sessions I think you can go to and then, you know, you get to wander around the expo and that's kind of where all the cool stuff is <laughs> anyway. Um, so that's a bigger event that's, that's in New York. That's usually late October. I think I usually go to that a couple of weeks after vid summit. Nice. Uh, you know, Oh, go ahead. Oh, I, uh, oh no, I, I was just going to say, I remember uh, Ross invited me to that. So, I mean, that sounds like a bigger event than I thought it was. Even. I, w I was just going to say that I think somebody needs to create the website that constantly keeps track of every conference so you can go to one place and always find out, you know, see a full calendar events of all the things related to media um, in one place. I've seen a couple websites that kind of do it, but uh, and I for a split second thought about doing it myself, but it would be so nice to have, you know, because I, uh, um, you know, some of the stuff that, that like the, the pod um conference that you went to, you, to in Florida, all awesome. these little things, all these smaller things happen all over the country. And a lot of times you, you don't, they don't, their marketing never makes it to you outside of the area or whatever. So, uh, I think that would be a, a good opportunity for somebody to build a site that, uh, that actually actively keeps track of all these events and allows people to, you know, to see them in advance, you know, to know which ones, you know, the, you know, like the ones that are in the Northeast that might be easy to, to, to get to with a little advance notice. Yeah, that that sounds like it would be a good app too. Oh, for sure, yeah. Be able to jump on, maybe something for John to take. I was just gonna say, did you know I write apps? 
<laughs> yeah, that's why I said it. By the way, I wrote an app. So, so when should yeah. we? When By should way, we expect John, that? Do you write apps? I do. Yeah. So I I didn't tell you that. <laughs> I heard John writes apps. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, but does he write know, apps? You, <laughs> <laughs> so you can find it on uh, iOS. You do it too. U D O I T two, and on Android, you do it. U D O I T. All right, here. Let's. So do you write the apps, or do we write the apps? <laughs> you do it. No, you, you do it. <laughs> I don't do it. <laughs> you do it. So that's my trigger word. Every time somebody said you do it, whether it was just as part of a conversation, where no, you know, I'll I'll do it. No, you do it. As soon as I heard that, I'd be like, no, I don't do it. You do it. <laughs> the whole time in New York City, mastermind. Yeah. I was driving yeah. them nuts. <laughs> A little bit, <laughs> but then it became a thing because then I know every time you say this, you've committed to the bit, so like I have to keep hitting that button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we just crossed over the hour mark. Are there any uh, topics you guys want to bring up before we wrap up the first uh, actual video conference for New York City Video Mastermind? You guys are awesome. Thanks for helping to put this together. No, seriously, I mean it though. Um, and our first live meetup after our first live meetup, meet uh, it's all been it's all been working out very smoothly. I think we got a good crew of people, and you know, hoping to see what it grows into in the future. So it's always fun hanging out with you guys. Yeah, I appreciate you guys including me. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, hopefully we'll be able to uh, schedule uh, another one in person at some point. And I think I cut Dan off. See, I, it's my channel, and I I always have a habit of opening my big mouth when other people are trying to talk. Go ahead, Dan. No, <laughs> it's all good. No, and, and this is this is what's exciting. I'm talking about conferences, talking about just making it happen. Uh, we have Chantel in there, Fiberific. She, you know, one thing she said, you know, in Australia, it's like there all these conferences are like so far away for her. Um, but maybe sometimes it's that means you got to be the person to start something and that could just be a meetup that, that could be like a mastermind group like like us with just a couple of a few other like-minded creators who are in your area so i definitely encourage everybody that's that's in this chat right now that that follows dan um and in, in creator fundamentals to be like hey figure out your area just just connect with a few other people you know if, if you don't know anybody and you've not been to any conferences to connect with them locally throw up a meetup on the meetup app and, and make something happen find, find one or two people or even do it over zoom like you know a zoom call or something uh, skype and just be chatting having that conversation because i think building your team your your tribe right like that's what what owens called it with me it's like that you know building your tribe of of like-minded people who will help push and drive each other uh, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to continue doing this and not just make it like a one-time thing, right? Where some way we could still stay connected. Um, getting together in person, I think, is powerful because there's power in talking and human communication, which so often we lack in the social media era, um, which is why we're like, we need to meet up in person. But I think like doing calls like this or doing live streams like this are powerful too because we could continue that conversation even though it might be a bit of time between meeting up in person again. Um, so I absolutely encourage people to get started. Like, that's literally what it is. Like Jay and I were like, we need to make this happen because everyone keeps saying we need to get together. We're local. Like we're, you know, well, we just need to make it happen. So let's just set a date and do it. And it's literally, this comes out of a Twitter message. DM. I was going to, I was going to say, I think that the final straw was the fact that, that we were all in a Twitter conversation, like saying, why don't we meet up? And then I was like, you know what? Hit the button. We're going to meet up. Yeah. Right. Make a date. Let's stick to it. Make it happen. Yeah, and, and just the people who are like minded, people who are cool and want to want to connect and actually wanting to do it, you know. And it's not it's not just like, you know, keeping it to where it's like minded people because there's a lot of people out there that are going to share terrible advice. So it's like, hey, keep the people that you connected with, the people that you know you can trust. And and I trust all these guys and everyone that's in that chat that's not here right now, um, and 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 be able to do that. So I think that's I think that's really cool, and I really do challenge everybody that's that's in here to to at least try that locally. Try it somewhere where you can meet up in person um, and do this. And it literally could start from a DM on Twitter, Instagram, if it's working. Uh, <laughs> and because uh, I heard it was down yesterday, 
just one or Is two. Is Instagram people. down? Yeah. I yeah. yeah. I, Is I it thought so. Oh. It's weird, right? Uh, I haven't heard that at all today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not today at all. I haven't heard anything. No. <laughs> Is that the disaster people were checking into earlier? Well, yeah, that's I think that's that's what made Twitter so happy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Twitter's like, we're back, baby. Yeah. You know, it was ironic yeah, though because press cycle, so now <laughs> I took a video of Instagram because after it came back up and I was trying to to like a comment, it would literally unlike it every time I pushed it. So I recorded it and I went to put it on Twitter and Twitter kept failing to upload it. So I'm like, <laughs> social media is just not working at all for me. So conspiracy. Um, You're the one who broke it, huh? Yeah, that's yeah. how it all started. That, that was the last. <laughs> that's the last straw that broke the camel's back. <laughs> Uh, that's the idiom I was looking for before. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, it's so inspiring hearing what everybody's up to, really. It's re-energizing to hear what all you guys are working on, you know, beyond any tips that we share with each other, anything. Just to hear and see other people who are in the same space going for things is really, really cool, especially when you hit those moments as a creator where you're, like, slowing down a little bit. And it's like, all right. I see. I see the road ahead now. Looking at what these guys are doing. So, and you know, you. I was going to say to that point, like the first time that I went to to Vid Summit, I, um, you know, you, you think you know what's going on. You think you have a, a good sense, and then you know you're walking around, and people are like, "Oh, well, do you have a mailing list?" And you know, you're sitting there going, "What's a mailing list?" You know, <laughs> and just pretending you know what's going on, and you know, people were talking about funnels and all these other things that I had no clue about. And now it's funny, and I'm going to be going back for my third time. And because of those initial conversations, um, and you know, sometimes you just you, you gotta you, you gotta keep learning more, and 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 you know, go out of your way to learn stuff that you don't know about. Uh, all those things that I picked up that were just a phrase somebody said that they were talking about, and how powerful it was, are all things that I've implemented because of those conversations since then. Um, and I've been able to grow over time as I learn how to do it and how to use them once you do it. Uh, and uh, I don't do it. <laughs> you do it. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it, that's another reason because it's just conversations you don't know, you, uh, you don't know. Uh, and, you know, hearing other people, even if you're not part of the conversation, hearing two other creators talk about how, you know, they're converting things or using their mailing list to double their sales, all these things just – uh, give you those little tidbits that you can, you know, plant that seed and, and grow that particular part of your your business or your creativity or whatever it is that you're doing. So uh, this has been uh, a pleasure. Uh, I'm going to put these guys on the spot and try to encourage all of them to agree to come back in the future. Maybe we'll do this every month or so, uh, you know, and uh, I think there's a lot of value here in being able to have a creator conversation. Uh, and as I was telling all of these guys, I, I've seen some other people doing these types of conversations and I really enjoy them because you get a lot of different perspectives uh, and it's not just my boring face on the screen for an hour. So uh, I appreciate everybody coming to hang out with us tonight. Thank you to Ross and Dan, John and Jay. Uh, it has been a pleasure. I hope you guys in the chat enjoyed this and, uh, uh, hopefully we'll be seeing some more just like this. Thank you everybody buddy, for coming and hanging out with us tonight. And, uh, hopefully in about a month, we'll have these guys back. Have a good night. Take care. Good to see all you guys. 